You're listening to Mind Pump, the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. Now, Hello. in today's episode, we answered four fitness and health questions that were asked by listeners and viewers just like you. But the way we open the episode is with an introductory portion where we talk about current events and studies. Sometimes we mention our sponsors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a breakdown of today's episode. By the way, you can go to mindpumppodcast.com and fast forward to your favorite part. Everything is timestamped. So if you just want to hear the fitness stuff, fast forward. But I recommend you listen from beginning to end because that's the way uh, we think everybody would that's enjoy That's how we the made most. it. So we start out by talking about annoying things. So we have fun conversation about that. Then we talk about biohacking. By the way... Ben Greenfield, our good friend, is the world's best biohacker. He's got inte wizard. integrity, super smart, and he actually lives the way that he preaches. He has a master class on biohacking that goes over hormones and diet and brain health and much, much more. And because you listen to Mind Pump, we got a hookup for you. So here's what you do. Go to getkeon.com. That's G-E-T-K-I-O-N.com. And then forward slash B M C mind pump. That's the letter B, the letter M is in Mary C mind pump. Go check out his master class. It's really cool. Then we talk about the documentary by Adam Carolla, No Safe Spaces. Really, really good. Mm. Then we talk about passive income goals and how Monopoly, the game Monopoly, teaches you about passive income and the value of it. Then we talk about Justin getting freaked out at home by the raccoon. He's scared of animals. Ooh, then we talk about that one. steak tips. No, not tips on how to cook your steak, but rather steak tips themselves. Just These a are tip. A, <laughs> cuts of meat that are really delicious. And we work with a company called Butcher Box that only deals with the best quality meat, grass-fed meat. And here's the best part. It's good prices because they deliver it to your door. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you get an exclusive discounted offer. So if you like quality meat, if you like your health, you like to build muscle. I like those things. Uh, go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump and then use the code mind pump. Then we talked about uh, how 22% of all dollars ever created were created in 2020. Yeah, there's not going to be any negative effects from that. Serious printing going on right now. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Then I talk about the UK's new sex laws. Oh, you guys over there. You crazy people. Shagging like crazy. Then I talk about a new study on ghrelin. This is the hormone that regulates appetite. Um, and then I talk about glyphosates, those things that they spray all over plants to kill weeds, but may actually be harming your microbiome and maybe even your gut. Ooh, it's affecting me. By the way, Organifi is a supplement company that makes organic products, but they've also partnered with third-party testing that tests for glyphosate residues. It's super stringent testing. So you know your products from Organifi have the least amount or no glyphosate residues. Plus, you get 20% off all their products because you listen to Mind Pump. Just go to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump and then use the code Mind Pump. All right, that was the intro. Then we answered some questions for fitness. Here's the first one. Why should I do compound lifts if I can develop an amazing body doing isolation lifts. They're hard. Next question. Uh, what causes the small muscles in your shoulders and upper back to get injured when you're doing things like bench presses and overhead presses? Uh, by the way, we have a webinar where we could teach you some, and it's free, it's a class, that teaches you mobility moves. You just go to primeprowebinar.com. Next question. Uh, how do mini bulks and mini cuts compare to long bulks well, or many. long cuts, cuts. In other words, is it better to diet for short periods of time or to diet for long periods of time? And the final question, this person's asking us a business question. What do we think about Gym Sharks uh, now sponsoring, or Gym Shark, I should say, now sponsoring gamers? So I actually talked about it like there's sharks in the gym or something. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming for you. Watch out for the Gym Sharks. Rawr. Also, listen, uh, this month we've taken two of our most popular programs, MAPS Anabolic is a full body muscle building, metabolism boosting program. So if you want to build strength and muscle, or if you're somebody that wants to boost your metabolism, get MAPS Anabolic full body program. We put that at major discount and combined it with our no BS six pack formula, which is a core training program designed to bring out definition in your abs and your obliques. Both programs combined, if you were to get them normally, is $174. Right now, you can get both together for $59.95. One payment, lifetime access. By the way, MAPS Anabolic is a three 
month program. So you get some phenomenal results. Oh, and all of it comes with the 30 day money back guarantee. So you could try the program. Doesn't blow your mind. Just return it for a full refund. If you want this discount offer, go to mapsoctober.com. Again, that's maps, M A P S, October.com. Hey, speaking of annoying things, you guys want to know what's annoying? Mm, I love annoying things. It's just one of those little things that happens that you just, I think you just forget to, you know, you just, they annoy the shit out of you and then you forget and it happens again and whatever. Well, uh, you sure. know, you go to the bathroom, right? Public bathroom and you, you put the, I don't, I'm not a very, like, I don't get grossed out very easily when it comes to that kind of stuff. I worked in construction sites with my dad, so <laughs> not a big deal. That is the ultimate cesspool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you ever work in construction sites, oh. your standards. And then the one with, like, the pictures taped on the inside of the door. Okay, I've worked in really gross ones. Oh, my so, God. Yeah, <laughs> I, like, uncomfortable. Hold, on. Hold so. on, what kind of pictures are those? Oh, yeah, like, like naked lady pictures. I'm like, what, like, what? what are we doing here? Like, this is a work site, you know? <laughs> I've seen that Inappropriate. before. No way. I haven't seen that. That's I remember great. that what? once. My, I was like 13 and my dad took me to uh, a work site or whatever. And um, they have outhouses or not, what do they call porta potties or whatever. And um, yeah, dude, you close the door and they're like, they they stuck, yeah. they would stick pictures on the op, on the side of the door, on the door. There's some disgusting dudes out there. That's like yeah. decor, huh? I was like, yeah, my mom's like, man, you're up early for your, working with your dad. Why are you so excited? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go to work. So are you still taking a dump in yeah. there? What's yeah. happening? I'm going to mix all the cement. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, no, I hate this. You put the, the I don't know what's it called, the, the seat cover. The toilet? Is that what it's called? Uh, isn't that isn't called it? the toilet, Doug? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah. Doug knows everything. Well, he yeah. corrects me on everything. What was I saying the other day that I was all fucked up? I was like, oh, I didn't even know that's so I can't keep track. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, Doug. And that's the truth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I think it's, I don't know what it's called, can liner, whatever you want to call it. Sure. But you put it, does it ever happen to you? You put it on. By the time you turn around to sit down, it slides down into the toilet. Yeah. So you just it's cold seat. Yeah. Cold mm. bare seat. Or like leftover wet stuff. Oh. Or it's half on the toilet seat and half in the water. And so the water starts yeah. to absorb up. Starts into to, it. Oh. Yeah. It starts coming up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've had Dude. that happen. That's so I might have sat on COVID. Yeah, so I wet, just want to warn you guys right wet now. Wet butt. I hate Better that. Sanitize that. Oh, yeah. That's the worst <laughs> ever. But then, of course, you work in gyms. Uh, I worked in gyms forever. So public bathrooms don't ever bother me. But that does. I don't like to feel. Cold plastic on my cheeks. Oh, yeah. I, I, I had an annoying. So I got cut off by this lady this morning in a Prius. Uh, it, it, you know, like. Weird. Yeah, what? weird, right? The the worst part is I was like jamming, you know, and there was this, there was like a, a truck that was going really slow, obviously. And uh, she decided to just, just right in front of me, no turn signal, no nothing, and then went slower than the person on the other lane. And I was like, "That this is a deliberate, like, you know, uh, she had a decision where I'm just, I'm going to cut you off. I'm going to go really slow. Did you do the right thing and terrify her? Yeah. <laughs> no, you did it. I monster up. trucked over her car. <laughs> no, you did it. I, got, I, I was just, a, I, oh. hey, Prius, can I say this? This is, I think this is a fact. I've observed this now, I don't know, at least a dozen times. Prius drivers are the worst drivers. I agree. Have you guys noticed that? I've called my sister in law out on that too. She had one. A bunch of people right now. I don't know what it is. She had one, and it's yeah, it's a different mindset. I think. I've seen more Priuses speed, cut people off, and just do. I don't understand what it is. (laughs) Maybe because you feel like because you're doing good for the environment, (laughs) you're that you're an asshole everywhere else. You're better than people. (laughs) (laughs) You're just running on these like little, you know, fart fumes. Oh, I'm so much better than you. That's, that's the sound. Bro, those, those are, yeah. You know those are such a scam. You know that, right? The I, cost and the... Yeah, that, yeah, I remember when I bought my Corolla, I was going down... That's back when you were pimping? Yeah, yeah hardcore, <laughs> yeah. No, there was... I went through it. This was... Uh, this is... Let's see here. When I died by that, that Corolla was... I don't that's know. That's the math sound, by the way. Yeah, that's, that's uh, my head. Going, five, math. I think it was about four, 10, seven, years, 10, to, 10 to 12 years ago, somewhere around there. I, I decided that, okay, I'm going to get a practical car. You know, up until this point, like, you know... Uh, I was all about like my dream cars or whatever car I really, really want to drive. I'm like, you know what? I need to be responsible now. I'm getting older and I'm going to go buy a good car, a car that gets good gas and that's reliable long term. Like who cares what it looks like? doesn't need to be cool. <clears throat> and so, so, so who is this guy? I know, I know. It's right, weird. Right. Well, well, I did have, you know, I still had the, uh, the Integra in the truck. So it's the third car, right? So it's like, okay, <laughs> I've got the two other cars that I thought were cool at the time that now I need to have a practical car that I drive most of the time to save the life on the other two cars and then to save yeah. money in gas. Smart. So, and what really, uh, <clears throat> kicked it off for me to go down there and do that was 
This was during the time I used to bank with Wells Fargo, and they. This was right. This is dating ourselves, right? This is right when the banks started to do this. Now every <laughs> bank does this now. So if you're young, you're like, well, "This guy's fucking." Back when banks were invented. Yeah, yeah. This is yeah. when. You remember when Washington when, Mutual? I mean, do you guys remember the, when banks started to do this? Doug, maybe Doug's probably he's more into this stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. When they started to uh, track for you all of your gas uh, bills. Oh, they will break it down. Yeah, they break it down for you. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, spending, you yeah. remember that, right? Like I that do. was that was in the the last you know two decades that happened. Before that, they, they didn't do stuff like that. So I remember the first time that uh, I looked at that, and up to that point, um, I always worked hard. My my thought process was, I'll just work so hard that I have uh, always have enough money to pay my bills, and I, I live be- below my means, so I'm okay, and I always have money in the savings, so I don't think about my day-to-day spend until that came out. And I look, and at that time I was driving this big lifted truck and I was driving up to uh, Tahoe all the time and to the lake. And I mean, I was taking trips everywhere and I was spending 750 to $800 a month on gas. And I was like, holy shit. That's, that's a lot of money back then I, too. Yeah, yeah, no, it was a lot of money back then. It's a lot of money but today, right? That's a lot of money on gas, right? Mm-hmm. To be spending, you know, you're $200 a week in gas. Yeah. And that's because the truck used to get like I want to say fifteen to eighteen miles per gallon. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I get on I get on the calculator and I start doing this. Like, okay, wait a second. So, that's eight hundred dollars a month that I'm spending just on gas. If I split the driving in half and did it with a car that got thirty miles to the gallon, it would negate a car payment of up to three hundred dollars. And like literally the next day, I was shopping for a Smart. car. Mm-hmm. I was like, I could get a brand new car. As long as the mo- the monthly payment was under four hundred dollars, I drove it fifty percent of the time. I would not spend any more money a month, and I'd have another vehicle. And you'd save the life of your old and I would your say truck or whatever. I was shopping the next day, and so of course at that time Priuses were really popular. That was what was the best gas saver at the time, and they had all that was uh, was it was blowing up and popular. And so I'm like, even though I didn't like it, and I thought it was an ugly car, I'm like, I'm going down here to save money. So I drive down there <clears throat> to go buy one, and I'm on the lot at uh, Toyota. And they're you know talking to the salesman and he's you know presenting how much it costs and oh if you you want to get this upgraded battery then it'll take you to like fifty miles a gallon and and when I'm looking at the final sticker price it's like twenty thousand dollars more than like their Toyota Corolla which yeah. is a regular gas car all you have to do is drive it for thirty five years and then you break it, it, it that's exact so I did the math I know again and I'm like okay so if it's twenty thousand dollars more than this Corolla. That it would have to get this much more miles per gallon. It would take me, and then I and I was like, "Holy shit!" At year twenty, I finally break even. Like, that doesn't even make sense. I'm like, I don't even have this car for twenty years, you know. Yeah. And and also, you could get an old uh, back then. Now the cars are even better, right? Now they're they're even more efficient and stuff. But this is when they first came out. It didn't didn't make any sense across the board. You could get better gas mileage and have a lower carbon footprint or a smaller carbon footprint. With like a 1991, uh, you know, Civic like Honda, yeah. Yeah. yeah, for reals. I know, like for reals. It d- it didn't make any sense, but people were buying them because it was a, it was a bit of a status symbol, yeah. you know. Like look back then, that's how I felt about it. Yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. like this is. And you know stupid. how wasteful the, the batteries? Do you know that when they throw oh, the yeah. batteries? What do you do? Away? Yeah, you got to recycle them. Yeah, and that's a big. Uh, it takes a lot of energy to do that. It uh, now they're a lot better now, but that's when they when they first. I remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you remember? You guys remember when we when, that one time? I remember where we drove and we there were no parking, and then you finally found it. We were with you. Adam, you were driving your truck. Mm-hmm. You finally found a parking spot. Didn't notice that it was a electric vehicle <laughs> only. Uh, a Whole Foods too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's an electric vehicle only parking spot, and they had like the they had the electric <laughs> pump or whatever. He puts it in, in like, his window. In his window. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, like like there's some kind of outlet inside. No, no, we yeah. park and then we get out, and I'm like, oh, and we're all out already, and we've been we're late, you know. I remember where we were going, and I'm like, oh shit, Adam's already walking into the store. Oh, I'm like, bro, God. I'm like, I don't know if we could park here. It's electric only. How many so, environmental people's heads explode? Yeah, so Adam's like, oh, he's yeah. pissed off, right? Because like I have to find more parking, so he walks over. and Instead of moving the car, he takes the electric <laughs> thing, sticks it in his window, and we go in the store. Uh, that was so, you know that triggered somebody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know that triggered some dude, kid. Dude, it's like, I'm fine if like that's your thing and you're trying to, whatever, the environment. But dude, the fast lane is the fast lane. Yeah. <laughs> no. don't, be get, don't be cutting me off and going slow. I was no. so angry. No, I, I, I appreciate that kind of stuff. But I got, I got blasted once because, first of all, I have this personality trait. <laughs> Good or bad, I don't like being told what to do. It's just a thing that I have to deal with. <laughs> did you see my did you see my story here. about you on that? Yeah, uh, j- yes, day before yesterday. No, what'd you do? Yeah, no. Did you no. make fun of me? I didn't. I, I did not. It? I did not. Uh, I did. I was. I was defending you, and I guess in a sense, right? So somebody was uh, making fun of your. Remember your your Chucks uh, for a while there when we were doing YouTube more often. Uh, 
people were saying that, oh my God, Sal's Chuck, he still has like the full laces in because they were all long. Oh God. Tell him to cut his laces. Yeah. And so somebody had, had, had asked that in my questions. Has Sal cut his Chuck laces? I said, you obviously don't know Sal very well. He is the type of person that just because- <laughs> yeah, if you, you point that out. Yeah, if you point it out and you tell him he should do something, he is the type of guy that even if it was a good idea or he might want to do it, he yeah. won't do it just because oh, of that. Oh, that's so bad. It, it happened it, with us with Game of Thrones. Right, right? Was exactly. Like, oh, it's frustrating. Tell me you're not that guy. I know. It's true, dude. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a flaw. It's a big thing I have to work on. So I, I, it happened to me once. Again, I was at another parking lot and there was no parking. And I know the laws, right? So I know that the parking law laws, like when it says parking for uh, electric <laughs> vehicles only, like there is no law to support that. That's right. That's, that's, so anybody could park there. There's nothing I, to do I about do it. I do the same thing though. Now you can, you can, and you should. This is me being like self-aware, calm podcast style, right? You should. <laughs> it's a private company. It's probably a good idea to respect what they want to do. That's that's right. a good thing. But in the moment when I'm annoyed and there's no parking and no. I feel like I'm being told what to do. And there's eight electric parkings wide open. Yeah, and they're wide open. I'm like, I'm parking here. Anyway, I get out of the store and this lady was waiting for me, like with her arms crossed, just yeah. standing by my car. <laughs> and she's like, this is electric vehicle only. And I'm like, already I'm irritated because I'm like, you waited? <laughs> tell me this yeah you know? yeah so i'm like I'm this like, is like her final stance yeah i'm yeah. like oh sorry i didn't read the sign I, she's like you didn't see the big sign i'm like Arr. oh man i mean she's right yeah i've been confronted with that with the e-cart parking too for grocery stores i'm like this is bullshit yeah you know i'm, not, I'm parking here it's that's right why you front. just that's why you just stick it in the window yeah <laughs> yeah see so you should have done that <laughs> No, the, the worst one, the worst offender is the Chipotle burrito loading zone. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I am 100% parking here and, and not paying attention to whatever bullshit you just made up. Okay, burrito you can't do that. The loading zone. Loading zone? zone? I'm going to load it in my stomach. Yeah. So obviously I'm following the rules that you just made up. Yeah. You know which one I always uh, respect, though? The uh, pregnant parking. Oh, yeah, yeah. I always respect. You don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be definitely the guy. Don't no, yeah. that's a big asshole. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You take the spot for a pregnant Although woman. Target has way too many of those. It's a lot. Yeah, yeah. they have way too many. <laughs> I mean, th so, look at their demographics. So, <laughs> so they yeah. they got like 12 of those parking spots. It's they like, do. come on, what are the chances of 12 pregnant ladies dude, are coming I'll, here right now? Hey, yeah, I'll speak, I don't know. Speaking of pregnant, dude, pregnant, I forgot this. Pregnant women get treated very, very differently in society. Mm -hmm. than, like we're. I, I don't care where we're at. If I'm with Jessica, she's obviously... We're ready to pop any second, right? And so she's been very visibly pregnant now for a little while. Mm -hmm. If there's any line, I don't care what it's for. Any line, everybody, she, she moves to the front. But, Women are dude, so that's rad. nice to her, in which, you know, I'm going to make a generalization. Typically in public, women can be a little mean to each other. You can, you just feel it. You can see a little bit. Not when she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. Everything. Can I hold that for you? Can I carry it? Isn't it? Don't you? I find that really interesting, especially you. You love to talk about evolution. It right? makes sense. Right? It does. Like, think, think about it when there was only 10 of us. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the, the one lady who got pregnant, it's like, oh my God, you're you were helping us survive and, yeah. and carry they, on. We got to look out for it. They right. do. They, and I love seeing that. I love seeing that. It makes me feel good about humanity that pregnant women get, you know, taken yeah. care of that. We were at, we were at uh, Santana Row. Yeah. And I don't know. Have you guys been there, by the way, lately? Mm -mm. No. At, at night, it's. Pat, I think, oh, I did go there actually. No, they, they, everything's outside cracking. They had DJ outside. It's packed. I yeah. think people are just so they want to be outside, right? So yeah. we go there and we didn't make reservations. I don't know. I should needed to make reservations to have dinner at five. Five p.m. is kind of early. Wow. But we go there and every restaurant that we checked, we checked like four. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't even allow walk-ins. They said sorry, we're booked all night. Yeah. Finally found one that had a wait. It was a two-hour wait. So wow. and now Jessica's like hungry, she's pregnant with my family. I'm like, oh my God, what do we do? And so I told her, I said, honey, yeah. I said, trust me, just go up to the front and just ask the host how long the wait is. I said, hold your belly yeah, yeah. and just do Wait, this. I said, fake a Braxton Hicks yeah. real quick. I said, yeah. just just be like, oh, <laughs> and, just, and just do this. Just be like, oh man, I'm, really I'm, so, food. I'm so hungry. Just yeah. say that. Worked. Oh, they, let, wow. they totally cut us all in front of the That's line. That's amazing. The closest guys have, and I've experienced this, is when you have a classic car. That's true. <laughs> Or, or diarrhea. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Okay, well, that's a totally different story. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's you really have to sell that, Adam. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the classic car, people are just like, oh, hey, awesome. Yeah. Oh, please get in front of me. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. park here. Yeah. You know, here, let me carry this for you. Diarrhea. Yeah. <laughs> diarrhea, though. Yeah, you got to. Actually, please. that's how you get out of a ticket, dude. You that's, got, that's the move. Dude. Really? Yeah, that's the move. Have you cop, done that? Yeah, if cop pulls you over. Oh, no my way. God. Oh, yeah, I ate some. You know what's crazy, though? The reason I found out not like trying to be an asshole, like it was true one time, you know? 
speeding like crazy, get pulled over, and like my stomach was just tore oh, up. Wait, true story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no way. So you know, maybe I abused that a few times. You know? Wait, so you've actually gotten wow. out of tickets more than once oh, by dude. saying you had diarrhea? When I was in my when I from seventeen to <clears throat> I don't know, probably twenty four. Try this. Probably mm. probably almost ten years. I. I uh, had that. I had that. <laughs> You're driving with your girl. Yeah. Hey, my, my, my girl's got diarrhea. <laughs> you <laughs> put throw it on, it on her. her. Yeah. <laughs> we got to get there. Yeah. My girl's about to shit herself. Yeah, you, then you got to hear about it forever. <laughs> I know. You know. Well, I mean, I feel like everybody can relate to that. Everyone's yeah. had that day, where, right, where it's been bad. And then you tell a cop that, like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm, I'm literally like three minutes from home. And so it works, huh? It does. Wow. It does. That is crazy. I mean, there's always exceptions to the rule, right? You can have an asshole that pulls you over. But most, most people understand, you know? And if you weren't doing something completely stupid. Now, there's times when I was young and I was racing my car and doing dumb yeah. stuff, but no bullshit excuse was going to get you out of that. <laughs> you just, know? just make sure you don't mess I tried, up. I tried the wasp one or the bees. You know? What? what? Yeah. Like, yeah. So, like, like I was, I, I, I got caught because I kind of swerved around a car through like double yellow lines. Oh, there's a I, bee in the car. Yeah. And I was just <laughs> swatting it as he was coming in there. Like, you know, and then I saw that on a movie and, uh, and they went, you know, crazy. I think it was like a Chris Farley movie. But yeah, I was like, I totally tried that. It, it <laughs> That's worked. hilarious. Yeah. You just don't, me- just don't mess up. Like, hey, why are you going so fast? Oh, phew, I got diarrhea. I drank yeah. too much beer. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to <laughs> yeah, make sure yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't say it that way. Yeah. My dad once tried to get out of a ticket by uh, not speaking English. So he. Oh, was- God. He was speeding on a motorcycle. He used to drive really fast, my dad. And uh, he got pulled over. <coughs> and so he did the whole, like, uh, no, no speak English. You know, he speaks broken English, but he's like, no, no, I'm sorry. I, no speak. I don't understand. So he's arguing back and forth with the cop. And the cop is, like, visibly getting frustrated. He's just like, forget it. No, my dad, he's like, I thought I had him. He goes, I could tell he was pissed off. I could tell he was frustrated. Yeah. But I kept telling him I couldn't speed. He was on the. He said he would get on the radio. <laughs> And he was seeing if other cops in the area spoke Italian. Can't find anybody. Of course, we're in San Jose. It's going to be hard to find a cop that speaks Italian. So finally, the cop come, walks over with a blank pad of paper and a pen, and he draws jail. <laughs> <laughs> and then he draws a stick figure, and he points to my dad. He goes, you this, you go here, unless you sign this ticket. So my dad signed the, <laughs> signed the ticket. Yeah, it's so, it didn't work. So oh, funny. That is funny. But anyway, hey, I got contacted by uh, an old client um, who I hadn't trained for a long time. I actually trained her when she was – 13 because her mom uh, was my client. Um, and uh, I, you know, I love working with kids. I also love working with older people and for different reasons. And um, you know, it's kind of cool when I find, uh, when I talk to old clients I haven't worked with for a long time and I see that they, it made such an impact that they, their careers now were kind of chosen based off that. That's cool. So she finds me, sends me a DM and she's like, Hey, you know, do you remember me? And I'm like, of course I remember you. I'm like, what's going on? And she's like, uh, Oh, I, I, I just listened to your podcast. She's like, I couldn't believe I found mind pump. I heard your name and I was like, no way. That's my old trainer. And I'm like, so what have you been up to? She's like, Oh, well, I'm into training and I'm into uh, biohacking. I'm a huge, um, biohacking like fiend. I love learning about the human body. I love about, you know, maximizing it, whatever. So I'm like, of course I'm like, uh, did you hear about our podcast through Ben Greenfield? <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. That's she's where like, you'd go first. She's like, yeah, I did. So we were mm-hmm. going, we had this whole conversation about the biohacking space and how just like the f- fat burning or muscle building space, there's a lot of crap yeah. that's out there. Yeah. And then there's a lot of it. Now she's one of the smart ones. So she was talking about all the crap that's out there. Um, and we were talking about all the good stuff. And, and you know, I, out of all the bio, whatever you want to ca- category of biohackers, there's really only one guy that I would sit down and kind of trust and talk to, and that's Ben. I can't yeah. think of it. Can you guys think of another one? No, that you really- I think that bef- I, so many on- charlatans in that uh, side of the, the the industry for sure. I think I think collectively we did not like that side of fitness for a long time. It was Greenfield that got us to really. <clears throat> it was yeah. because up before Ben. Anybody else, and I'm lumping in the bigger names like Asprey and guys like that that are out there. I am not a fan of like uh, the you've we've met them, we've seen how they live their life, we've seen the stuff they promote, and it's it's based around trying to just continue to make money off of people. It's, yeah, and there's other big rocks that 90 percent of the population should be focusing on, mm-hmm. but there is a percentage of the population that 
has dialed nutrition, has dialed exercise. He's got to be the most dialed person I know. Right. And then are looking for the next competitive edge edge for longevity and living a healthier life and bi- quote unquote biohacking. And even when we before we met Ben and we knew of him and we were going out to see him, I was very skeptical. I didn't care for what I'd seen so far. But when we met him, I was blown away. Mm. I was blown away because this dude 100% lives this life. Mm-hmm. Lives this life. Like real life. And is brilliant. He's one of the smartest dudes that we've ever met. Yeah. And so if there is somebody who I want to to tell me about the latest biohack, it is I, I text him all the time. If there's something came out or someone hits me up with something like, have you heard of this supplement? Or you know, what do you think about this? Like he's the guy that I'll message because I know that he's probably already applied it to his own body. Yeah, he's actually used it and, and, and noted. Made he makes really good notes from each one of these products and like really evaluates the worth of it, which is great. And well, you can't and you can't you can't do that unless you've teased out all the other things. Mm-hmm. Like people that are like promoting, yeah. Like if you're not like <laughs> dialing in your diet, your sleep, and your training, like I don't want to hear about this electrical product that you put up your nose that makes you improve your cognitive performance because I know that sleep, diet, and exercise are going to affect you know ninety something percent right. of that type of stuff. You right, know? right. And yeah, the, Ben is he definitely lives it. Uh, but here's the challenge with that space is that when you're dealing because what's biohacking really what it does is. That whole space. I wish they had a better word for it. Yeah. Um, but uh, they they deal with the cutting edge. So what I mean by that is all the newest, most interesting stuff that comes out, it goes there first. Mm-hmm. So what this means is if even if you have integrity, you're smart, and you do it all like Ben does, you're not always going to be right because it's cutting edge, right? right. It's new, 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 new stuff. By the way, <coughs> if you go back 15 yeah, years. Right. But sleep was biohacking. Yeah, bio, well, uh, right? uh, the, your microbiome was right. biohacking. I would challenge that because I've seen a lot of really old ideas that went through the fitness industry now make it into that space as, as you call it because it's it's all like geared towards you know these executives and these people like within like the mm. corporate world so you get like the vibration plates uh you know you get a lot of the the resurgence of some of the gimmicky stuff yeah, that, true. that yeah that you've seen before through our industry that is true and you see that too with the cutting edge of fitness right like cutting edge supplements cutting edge nutrition stuff will come out and what that means is you're you're even if you're really smart even if you break everything down even if you have a lot of integrity your 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 whether or not you're going to be right or wrong you're going to have a higher percentage of wrong because it's totally cutting edge it's totally new yeah so you know even the best are not always going to be on point but Ben really breaks things you know he's doing a master class for for people by the oh, way oh really yeah for, for is bio- it in person oh, cool. or virtual no these are virtual classes and he's uh, he's going to do like modules essentially so like hormones I haven't written down uh, because I was going to look into it. Hormones, sleep, gut health, recovery, fat loss, immune system, uh, personalized nutrition, and he's teaching this. So he's basically taking and doing like this really, really high level course. So it's not like very cool. Yeah, so you'll go through it, and you should come out. Uh, and knowing Ben, he's not going to be. It'll be very it. thorough. Yeah. It's going to be extremely, you know, thorough on you know everything that's uh, that you learn. That's very there. cool. Hey, yeah. did you did you watch the documentary No Safe Spaces? Oh, I loved it. Bro. Did you guys watch it yet? Not yet. Justin. Yeah. I was busy watching what I was going to talk about, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Did I fuck your transition up? No, right no, no. I mean, I mean, if you had a better transition right there. I, I mean, don't. Okay. I, I just, I, I've been busy watching other things. That's, yeah. all. That's all I'm saying. No, it's Adam Carolla. Uh, it's his, good. It's good. Uh, his documentary, and he talks about the, essentially it's the, it's how free speech is being treated. It's I, really strange. I did not know mm. the Brett Weinstein story and the whole Washington At Evergreen Evergreen College. I did not know that story. Yeah, I had I had no idea about that. And watching it on that documentary, and now I'm like so intrigued. I had uh, Katrina reach out to Brett Weinstein, hopefully uh, to get an interview with him. I know we just talked recently that he, you know, he was on Tom Bilyeu's show, and and Tom did a great job. But man. And now I'm like, oh my God, I wanted to hear, I want to hear him talk about that. Yeah. I mean, the dude like was scared for his life. 
Yep. They 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 literally were threatening him. He was he didn't know what to do. He l- ends up leaving. Ends up suing the college. I mean, there's such a huge story. So there. do you, do you guys know the whole uh, Justin and, and Doug? Do you guys know the whole story behind that? Oh uh, well, basically. So this is where they they didn't want uh, white people to go to campus. Yeah. That one so day. so there's this. They, they have a tradition. They have this they, tradition called the Day of Absence. I think it is, and it's based off of this play. And maybe Doug can look it up. Day Day of Absence. I think that's what it's called. Anyway, there's this play. Evergreen College. That I've never seen. Uh, I've never seen this play before but apparently in the play um you know minorities in the play decide not to show up to work and not contribute to society to show everybody how important they are so it's a really interesting uh-huh. play sounds like a great uh play i've never watched it and it's a really good. cool thing that the college has been doing for yeah years. so for for what they've done for for years is minority students uh once a year voluntarily say we're not going to come to class we're not going to come to school and the school is is honored it and it's, it's part of this whole thing but then they flipped the script one year and they said, uh, uh, if you're white faculty or white students, don't come to school, which is very different. It's yeah. not like choosing uh, to, you know, it is day of absence. Awesome. Who's the, who's the guy that put that together, Doug? What's his name there? In case somebody wants to look it up. Yeah, Douglas Turner Ward. Okay. Can you read us the, can you, it says the, the story. Can you give us a, a little synopsis for the, so, because I, I don't know. Sure, yeah. It says it's a satire about an imaginary southern town where all the black people have suddenly disappeared. Oh, I see. Okay, interesting. So anyway, so they flipped it, and instead of saying we are voluntarily not showing up to school, they said white people and faculty don't come to school. And he's like, that's very different. Mm-hmm. That's very different. Now, and it's, wasn't this what what caused that? Because it just, just has happened like a year ago, right? Um, the thing was 2017. Couple years, yeah. Was it? It was a yeah. few years ago. Yeah. And it was was it part of the the whole BLM, uh, BLM movement? Mm. Is that what kicked it going, or what what caused it to, to do? That? I don't remember what it said. There's but, just been a for the last ten years. There's been an interesting uh, shift, uh, in, especially in, in colleges, and this was kind of part of that trend, I think. Mm-hmm. So he's he's a white and teach by the way ultra liberal is his political his policy like preferences and whatever very very liberal so he's yeah. not even a conservative and he's like this is not the same you're you're forcing people to not come to school that's totally different that's racist in itself yeah and he goes I'm coming to school <clears throat> and anyway it caused big problems riot uh, you know at the school protests and and he was fearing for his life so that was the story behind that wow. but this documentary it's very interesting you know it's so opposite. Colleges used to be uh, like Berkeley, for example. That was like the the seat of the free speech movement in the right, '60s. Right, like that's students would be like, we should be able to say whatever we want, um, you know, and not be, uh, you know, not have government tell us what we can and can't say, not have the colleges tell us what we can and can't say, and it flipped. It's totally flipped now to where they're silencing. Speech, and this is a bit of a scary uh, precedent. It's actually unique um, mm-hmm. in American history because, of all the countries in the world, of all the free countries in the world, America values free speech uh, greater than anyone. Actually, we don't. In fact, you can't go to jail for speech here unless you're inciting violence. Whereas in other free countries, you can go to jail for saying certain things or or whatever. So our speech is very very protected here but this is the first time it's been challenged that's what the well, whole documentary well yeah and in, in the documentary they say something that uh, you say a lot I've, or at least i've heard you say it at plenty of times and i'm pretty sure you've said it on this podcast definitely off air we've talked about this and that's you know that is that was put in place to protect hate speech well not just it's to protect unpopular speech correct. you don't need a law for popular speech if if everybody likes it and is pro it you don't need to put anything in place to protect it well here's here's what's important about that because there's definitely things that people can say that i think we can all agree is terrible right? you can make racist comments you could say terrible things about children or you know and i would hate that someone said that right so uh, i get that we can all agree upon that but freedom of speech is explicitly there to protect unpopular speech because at one point saying slavery was wrong was unpopular, unpopular speech. Right. You know, at one point saying women should vote is unpopular uh, speech. In many countries, criticizing the government, even in yes. some free countries, this is a big one, is considered unpopular That's speech. Still today, uh, in a lot of places, it is. Because how are you going to stand up and fight against tyranny if you can't talk about it? That's right. And also, blocking speech doesn't block people's ideas and thoughts. And I would rather be out in the open and then let's debate, let's air it out and let the best ideas, you know, yeah. come forward. Compete the ideas and obviously yeah. the, the best one's going to win. Yeah. Right. So it's a, it's, it was a very good uh, documentary. Adam Kroll is such a, I didn't know he had the most downloaded podcast ever. 
Yeah, yeah. 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 I knew he's that. been I, in the game like one. Of, he's one of the first. Yeah, I know. I know Joe Rogan's on pace to beat that now, but he like he d- Joe Rogan is getting more listens now per, now, but total downloads because Adam was in the game like I think several years before yeah. mm-hmm. Joe even got into the game. Wow. Yeah. Hey, did you? I was playing um, Monopoly with my kids the other day, and uh, you know that's not a bad game I love to that teach game. kids how to uh, invest properly. Yeah, it, it. I love that game. I mean, it, it always turns into like a fight at the end but <laughs> you know at least it's like it's good it gets them aware of like you know how to really manage their money and how to like invest appropriately yeah because the strategy with the winning strategy with monopoly because my it's me me or my son always win it's because we always play the same strategy try to spend as much as you can getting properties even if that means you're down to your last whatever yeah mm-hmm. because eventually it comes around and then you make passive income and you win the game right which is very much how the strategy is uh, the, a successful strategy is in life yeah you know where you, you you have your money and then make your money make money for you so that you could do other stuff while you're you know while, while it's making money now do you it. find yourself teaching your son that as you're playing totally. or okay so. yeah totally I, yeah, I actually and does have, that interest him is he interested in that he conversation? is uh, that's cool. he asked me questions about interest rates um, loans and so I try to break that down for him I say look when you're young mm-hmm. and you have uh, not a lot of responsibilities. I said, try to live below your means, take your money. And your goal is to take your money first, save it, try to save your, your first, you know, hundred thousand or whatever, or 50,000. Try to make that, which is hard, by the way, it takes a long time, but then try to take that money and then try to find ways for it. Seed it. To make money for you. Mm-hmm. Because if you try to become uh, wealthy just by earning money through work, it's going to be really hard. There's mm-hmm. only so many hours you can work and not very many people can get a job or build a business that ends up making them super wealthy. But m- most people, I remember there's one client I had who was, he started off as a grocer uh, as a kid in San Jose and eventually was just a grocery store manager. Mm-hmm. But because he always bought properties, you know, and obviously in the Bay Area, the guy was like, by the time I got, he, he hired me, he was in his 60s. I love stories like that. Multi, multi-millionaire. Yeah, I love that. Dude, I finally got into that uh, haunting a blind manor. I think you brought it up it's before, good, right? right? Dude, so it's a pretty funny thing. Last night we were watching it, and we were watching the first episode, and it was starting to kind of get intense, and, uh, you know, you're seeing little flashes of, like, you know, ghosts and stuff, <laughs> and we're getting like, whoa, uh, and the music started kind of picking up, and it was a hot night, and so I had one of the doors open with the screen door open, and we started hearing stuff outside, you know. And I've been telling you guys, we've been having like critters and all this stuff, like you know, more visible these days. So uh, we're there with the dogs; the kids are asleep, and uh, you know, it starts to get really intense to where we're like, okay, there's going to be something that's going to jump out on the screen. You know how they kind of set you up for that. And all of a sudden, we look over, we hear a rustling outside. We're like, wait, is that outside or on the screen? And it's outside. We look at the screen door. And there's a face of the raccoon oh. looking right at us, just <laughs> no. scared the fucking shit out of me, dude. Oh, no. I jumped out of the, <laughs> jumped off of my couch, and the dogs got rawr, 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 opened it up, and of course, like Arlo chased them all around, you know, uh, and chased them up a tree. But it was just like such perfect timing, you know. Like we were like, oh man, this was like planned. That's See, my biggest fear: is you pull back the drapes at night or open the blinds, and there's a face. Yeah, like that. It would, was just like staring at I us, would, just like. Start, I think I'd start crying. If I saw yeah, that. see, that does not interest me at all. Well, no, the not raccoon this, happened. In it was house. kind of fun, though. You're not going to get a raccoon in your it house. Doesn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. doesn't matter, dude. It just uh, does not sound. It's a good. It's well written. Tell them it's well written. It's really well written. Yeah, so, it's okay. it, it's a good story, and I know you're into storylines and all that. Okay. But dude, I think it, it, he was attracted because like I've been barbecuing a lot lately too. So mm. they smell that and they go around it and, and you know look for scraps and all that, and they're always trying to eat the dog's food. But uh, yeah, I was I've been grilling a ton lately, dude. Like we, we had some awesome steak tips with. Um, I haven't tried the steak tips. So these are the butcher box. My ones? favorite. They I, have. Steak I don't tips? know what you guys are your favorites. Yeah, the, the cuts of meat. That's my favorite so far. Whoa! I didn't know they do that. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if it's all the time. Is it one of those like add ons? It, that they it do? might be an add on. Uh, yeah. Well, you had one the other day that was an add. I, so I'm what I'm really bad is I've kind of set like what I know I use. Go like the, on there and check for the add ons. Yeah, I, don't, I got brisket. I, I don't have, like three briskets. Going. I don't check enough oh. to see all these. So they constantly are doing like changes of add ons. They had lobster tails a little yeah, while ago. I know, right? 
right? Yeah. Oh, I didn't, well, you brought, I didn't take advantage of that. You brought that one that you just heated up in the microwave. What was that? Like a brisket or what was it? Yes. And it was already shredded and it was like in a, a, a like a single meal? Yeah. I didn't even know they did Oh, so. oh, no, 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 no. You're talking about the pulled pork. Yes. No, they had pulled pork. It was already cooked, but, you know, typical butcher box, right? Yeah. Healthy, like good ingredients or whatever. Then they have, uh, uh, what's it called? Brisket. Yeah. So they don't always have it, but if they do, I get it. And yeah. then we do it in the in the pressure cooker. Well, I just love fall because like you get the squash, you get like, you know, a lot of those types of vegetables and peppers mm. and things. And so we made this medley with, uh, you know, with potatoes and everything with it. It was so good. Dude. Mm, oh. Yeah. I, yeah. I like the, I like the winter cause then I just eat more. Oh, you know yeah, saying? that's too. Put on yeah, that just all in. Just wear my sweater. <laughs> <laughs> Something heavy. Yeah, yeah. I'm still doing. I'm still. Bro, I you sent over. I think Sal sent over this article, and we have to talk about this because this is this blows my mind it, that this stat is real. And I fact checked it, and for what I for what I see, it seems to be real. Twenty two percent of the money that is in circulation right now in the United States was printed in 2020. Yeah. 22%, almost a quarter of all dollars, of all dollars printed? was printed this year. That not, it, not printed, created. Same difference? Yeah, same difference. Yeah, but right. created in other words, because some, it's digital, right? Some digital. Meanwhile, we yeah. have, we're having this crazy coin shortage and all that. Uh, yeah. Dude, this is getting me worried. It's, it's, well, so, what makes me worried about that is the, the amount of inflation that has to happen from exactly. that. Already, we're already seeing it. You're yeah. already seeing it in um, uh, investments. You're seeing it in stocks. Uh, so you're seeing it in, in houses. Um, and pretty soon you'll start seeing it with consumer products. So essentially what this means is that they, they, they've done these stimulus packages, right? This $1 trillion one, this another one that's trillion dollars. What that means is that they tell the Fed, Federal Reserve, we need more cash to flood the market and we're going to use it for these different things. But because it's not money or wealth it's that's backed, it's not created by increased in efficiency. It's not like a new product came out or a new service or something that you know increased efficiency. It's just money. It's just monopoly money. It, what happens is all the rest of the money that's out now loses value. So if there's like you know if there's only a hundred dollars available on Earth, and you, you know there's there's a product that is worth twenty dollars, and then you double the amount of dollars that are available, but they're not connected to any productivity. Or efficiency, now that product is automatically worth forty bucks. So just it raised the price. Well, it's like anything. I mean, the, it, put compare it to a, a Ferrari. You know, Ferrari only makes so many Ferraris every year, and then and part of what keeps the value of them is that there's only a hundred of those. Mm -hmm. If all of a sudden if we made one hundred thousand of those those models, it would go down because so many more yeah. people could afford to buy it. it. Into a That's what we're doing with money. We just all of a sudden flood in twenty two percent. That's insane yeah. to me. This is how I teach my kids about the value of money. So I'll do this uh, thought experiment with them and I'll say, what, what, I said, do you think it would be a good thing if we just gave every person in America uh, $10 million? And a little kid's always going to be like, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah, we're all rich. Yeah. And so then I'll explain, well, okay, here's what ends up happening if you do that. It's uh, everything's just that much more expensive. So nobody's better off. And then we explain, you know, inflation, how that works. Which somebody taught me that when I was a kid. Yeah. I had no idea. I had no idea either. Yeah. I, 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 but I remember being a kid going like, why don't we just print more money if we have the ability? To <laughs> yeah. I you mean, got the machines, right? Yeah. Why don't we just print it and just distribute to everybody so everybody's okay? You just, that's why that, uh, I can't even think of the name of the book, the Peter Schiff's book, which uh, turned us on to interviewing him. That book was such a great book. I mean, oh, I can't yeah. wait to read that book to Max because they, they did it in such a, a simple way that a, a kid could understand by telling the story from the very beginning. Being on an island, there's two people, they're fishing, so at that time, that's the commodity. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Fish to survive, and then somebody figures out how to make a net, and now there's 10 fish, and then what And it's like the evolution of an economy, what it looked like. We're just so far beyond that that people can't comprehend. We're removed from it, right? Yeah, yeah. So you're, we're so, uh, there it is, how an economy grows and why it crashes. Thank yeah, you, yeah. No, money has to represent uh, good services, efficiency. Otherwise, it's worthless. It doesn't, it's not worth anything. Yeah. Uh, you guys ready for some weird, crazy, and I don't know, maybe scary news? Ooh, <laughs> so uh... this is in the, this is in the UK right now. Okay. So they have, I think they've designated certain parts of the UK, like more safe, less, less safe, depending, based upon COVID infections. Mm -hmm. So here's what they released. This just happened. Couples living apart in areas with tier two restrictions. So apparently these are places with more restrictions because COVID cases are climbing. Okay. So couples living apart in these areas with, that are tier two restricted are not allowed to have sleepovers 
unless they are in a support bubble. In other words, you are not allowed to have your girlfriend over and hook up with them or whatever if you guys are in this uh, this tier two zone. You can meet them in public, but you can't kiss them in public. How are they regulating this? Uh, that's exactly my... And this is a law. They're saying that they'll punish people. Oh, in no, a law. law, too. Yeah, they put this in their regulation. So obviously what they do is make examples of a few people, make it look like they're on top of this. You yeah, know, yeah right. Like, yeah, we're going to make a real hard stance with this. We you might be knocking on your door. Dude, you cannot manage that. That's a that's a that's like a nightmare to manage. One of, the, one of the worst things you can do is pass a law that you can't enforce. That, remind, that reminds exactly. me... Exactly. Well, we do it all the time. Don't you yeah. remember the... Uh, that's why F- they use fear. Don't you remember the FBI warning? on video cassettes. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. a great example. That's a perfect example. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I'm recording, the FBI's I'm recording this shit. I'm saving it for later. You know what I'm saying? Hi, I'm the FBI. I know what you do with that VCR. <laughs> yeah. 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 When does that ever happen? Never. Yeah. Never happening. I want to know. Yeah. Dude, when you're I'm in- renting it for $3.99 and I'm recording it on my other cassette so I can watch it fucking 40 times. We're going to interrogate you. Yeah. Yeah. Remember yeah. when you were a kid, though? Over Roger Rabbit. But when you before you figured that out, like at first were you kind of like, oh my God, is this yeah, no, I, I, re- I remember thinking that, going like, oh, the big F, you know, you know, that big old, yeah, uh, the, the big, the, the, the blue that. screen and the FBI warning, <laughs> cop, you know, you're like, oh shit, as a kid, you're like, wait a second, dad, we have this dual cassette thing, isn't that what that's for? Is for us to record that shit? Like, yeah, yeah aren't we He's breaking like, the yeah. law? Yeah, that's yeah. how you yeah. learn how to break the law. That's yeah. why I'm saying you shouldn't pass laws you can't enforce because yeah. then people just start breaking the law, <laughs> and then the next law is easier to break. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Oh, that's, my God. that's silly. I uh, read an interesting study on uh, the hormone ghrelin. So I know you've talked about ghrelin mm-hmm. uh, in the past a lot, Adam. Mm. So it's a hormone that helps yeah, signal response. the yeah, it helps signal that you're full, right? If mm. ghrelin goes up, it yep. means you eat less or whatever. So they did these animal studies where they blocked the receptors to ghrelin to see what would happen to the animals. A couple interesting thing happened. Hmm. The an- the animals ate more frequently. That's expected because ghrelin helps tell you that you're full. So now that they don't have the receptors for ghrelin, they're they're more likely to eat more often. But here's something else that that was interesting. They their memories were severely impaired, so they weren't able to remember, um, you know, things as much because ghrelin was blocked. And really? in in yeah, and in also, and I I remember reading uh, studies of uh, drugs that never made it past the full FDA testing, where they were trying to see if they could, you know, because they're always looking for the the, yeah, the weight the, loss the fat drug. loss pill. Yeah, yeah. so. But they did find that there were some cognitive impairment issues, hmm. and it, it kind of makes sense to me because if you're an animal and you find food in nature and you eat until the ghrelin goes up and you feel full, it probably encourages you to remember where the food was. But if hmm. ghrelin never goes up, you never get that improved memory to remember where food is because animals are really good at that. They're I, really good at remembering where. Oh no! The that, food is. Yeah, I look at the bear at, uh, or Trucky. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. I remember. <clears throat> I remember. I told you guys that was like the thing I was most worried about after I saw that he broke in the house was he got enough food that he left a ton of food, which means he got <laughs> he ate, remembers. Yes, he ate until he was full and then left. You better believe when that it, it kicks up again and he gets hungry, mm-hmm. he will follow that trail right back to that same place because he had so much success there. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, that's wild. Yeah, so it's it just points out that it's not we're so complex that just finding something and be like this is the key. Yeah, they targeted it. There's going to be some downstream events you need to or or consequences you need to be careful with and I I don't think we're going to anytime soon stumble upon the the perfect weight loss pill. I think it's way too complex still. I'm yeah. sure at some point we'll figure it out. Do you think so? Do you think we're ever going to figure it out? Which, by the way, even if we did... It still wouldn't give you there, all the benefits. Do you guys remember remember that one that was like uh, the uh, you put it on your head and then it shocked your, your, your brain? Your vagus nerve. Yeah. Yes, it missed, it, it, it affected the vagus nerve and it will cause yeah, you to eat less I was, <laughs> and make you dizzy. I'm wondering where that's at now because I, I was super Modus, worried about Modius that. or Modius or yeah, Modium or yeah, something like that? Yeah. That was what it was called, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I, wonder, I wonder how they're doing I mean, these even days. if it Works, that was the thing. Because here's even if it works, it's like the the analogy that we give with uh, you know giving people money, like winning the lotto. It's the same thing. Like if you if even if you get this fat loss pill that actually works, like it's still going to cause problems because the behaviors that you have to put in place in order to earn that or figure that out. That's on what your makes own, you healthy. Exactly. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. the real secret. That's the secret sauce. Is that is the journey there of getting there that makes you the same thing for the the millionaire. If someone just hands you a million dollars versus the guy who had to or girl that had to work their ass off and, and, and have you can't remove the work. No, just, because it's never worked. that is what allows you to sustain that. Yeah. So the journey you, is everything. And I, 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 you know, I can say this confidently as somebody who's been, you know, training and working out forever. 
if I were to list the most uh, in, important benefits of exercise and nutrition for myself, like the ones that are most important in my life, the building muscle, being lean, you know, looking good, wouldn't make the top probably five. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, it would be up there somewhere, but it wouldn't be in the top five. The the benefits, the real benefits I got was learning discipline, um, learning how to um, you know regulate myself, uh, learning how to have a good relationship with food, um, and then all all those those skills bleed into the rest of my life. This is why people who exercise regularly and prioritize the nutrition for long periods of time are more successful uh, typically with their families. They're more successful with business because these are skills that you end up learning. It's that analogy I give uh, all the time where I say, you know, the man who you could, you could take a helicopter and drop someone off on the top of Mount Everest and they'll have a beautiful view, but it's not nearly the same as climbing. It's not as rewarding. No, you climb Mount Everest. It's a completely different experience. Right, right. You learn way more and you grow way more, you know, as a person. Speaking of, uh, of learning, uh, remember that study I brought up on, on Venus, how they said they found something that, that, uh, told them that they were, there may be life on Venus. Yeah. Now they, now they found that glycine is in the atmosphere. So an amino acid, that is a building block for life. So more evidence that there may wow. be life potentially. So on okay, Venus. It, I mean, dorks. It's gonna be crazy once <laughs> we actually get to Mars, like and, and get samples and all that. I wonder if there's you know similar type of organisms Dude, there too. You I, know? I, I think it'd be so cool. Yeah, so crazy. Yeah, my my conspiracy theory is that humans. Yeah, I geek out on that too. So oh, by the way, that was hilarious. Which one? Whoever did, I should give a shout out to the kid who posted that on a, the oh, somebody on, the on our forum. Facebook forum oh, was saying was like great. this forum's gotten boring for a while. I want to spice it up and said like <laughs> start listing all your conspiracy theories. Oh my god! That I like was... how Justin went off real oh, yeah. quick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I had to give like the most ridiculous ones I could think of, and it's like you know. Oh, I, you know, you got to warn me ahead of time what's in here so I can, like, I know whether to waste my time. I mean, you're, you're going to waste your time with all of these. Yeah, yeah I know. Okay, right? so yeah. what do you want from me? These are ridiculous <laughs> ideas that I have. I find entertainment value in it. I don't, like, <laughs> I'm not, like, subscribed to the ideas. Right, right. Justin did the uh, interdimensional Sasquatch. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that great? Theory. Oh, it's so good. That's, That's a real, is that a real conspiracy? Yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah, that, Shut your that the face. reason why and he's the hollow never, earth theory and all that. Yeah, oh, the reason so why good. he's never been found is because he's interdimensional. He's interdimensional. Bro, do you subscribe to a magazine that you get sent to your house no, that is I, full of these things? I or mean, I, I watch all those shows, dude. Like I watch <laughs> all the ancient aliens and all the you know UFOlogy stuff, and you know I'm, I'm really into like ancient cultures, and so it all it's funny because they try and interweave all this stuff uh, and connect dots, you know, and it's always aliens. Like there's this huge button. It's like aliens. Yeah, if we don't know the answer. <laughs> It's, yeah, aliens. it's aliens. It must have been aliens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's hilarious. Oh, I want to bring this up before we transition to the question. So in the past, I haven't talked about this in a while, but in the past, I've talked a lot about uh, glyphosates. So glyphosates, for the listeners who don't know, are uh, chemicals that we invented that are herbicides. So you spray them on plants and it kills the plant. Okay. And so this is, this is why GMO plants um, uh, are have taken over the market because what a GMO plant is, like GMO corn, is it's modified corn <clears throat> so that it doesn't die when you spray it with glyphosates. But then all the other plants around it do die. So if you want to have a bunch of crops of corn and you want to get rid of the weeds, you blast the whole crop with glyphosates. The corn survives and the weeds die. But the problems with glyphosates are glyphosates mm -hmm. also, inter they interact with this pathway called the shikimate pathway, which is what you find in plants, but you also find them in bacteria. Mm. So one of the problems with these glyphosates is you are blasting a mild antibiotic into the ground, killing the biodiversity of uh, bacteria in the ground. Not a good thing. Not a good thing at all. And I mean, there's, you're talking about billions and billions of pounds of glyphosates being sprayed every single year. And it year. affects bacteria, which also live inside of us. That's right. Which so, is what we're mostly made of. Mostly. Right. So then you, <laughs> eat, then you eat GMO plants. The GMO plant themselves probably not going to cause a problem. But the fact that they have glyphosate residue all over them, over time, theoretically, could really disrupt your gut microbiota. It can cause the spaces in your gut uh, cells to space out, causing leaky gut syndrome. So it can cause a lot of problems. And some scientists think this may be one of the main reasons why uh, we're seeing so many food allergies and food intolerances just explode. It's because of our exposure to glyphosate. So that takes me to our partner, Organifi. 
So Organifi is partnering with a, a, a company called the Detox Project. So this is a third-party laboratory that tests products. I didn't know this. Specifically for glyphosate residue. Mm. Oh, rad. Yes. So, That's so which by the way, this is hard to do even with organic food because there's still, it, there's still remains of it and it's out in the air. Right, and it, it goes they, up and, and then the rain brings it back. Down. Right. Yeah. I remember, I remember Dr. Bush when he interviewed, uh, when you interviewed him and you guys talked about this, like it's almost impossible to get rid of it completely. So having some sort of test to measure like the best areas or best crops. And, and there is no like regulation on how much glyphosate residue something can be on or whatever. But anyway, so Organifi product, and this is one reason why we work with them, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're so concerned with quality. They're going to get third-party tested, and they got the stamp of approval from the detox project. Wow. Beautiful. So in other words, their products got very, very uh, hard, like scrutinized. They got scrutinized big time for, does it have any glyphosate residue? What's the deal? And uh, great. Well, we saw their great. action with the heavy metals, and when right. they came out with the study of all those other companies, and now they're doing this. I mean, there's not a lot of companies that are putting their product to that kind of testing. Yep. So their products, they can confidently say, are residue glyphosate residue free, confirmed by a third party. So not them saying it; it's a third party that's testing them. Shout out to Organifi. Oh, awesome. First question is from I Love Dallas. Why should I do compound lifts when I can build a good-looking body with isolation movements? I wonder well, if that's Debbie. Yeah. Well, first, first of all, yeah. oh my God, that's that a nice, throwback. Nice throwback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Only if you're like uh, in the '80s or earlier, you'll get that you one. You need you a don't... VCR to, to pull that off. <laughs> yeah. um, so, first of all, it's a, the question it assumes something that's false. Okay. So, mm. can you develop a good-looking body with isolation movements better than doing nothing? But you definitely won't develop the full potential of your body without doing compound uh, lifts. Compound lifts are just far more effective at developing the body, building muscle, uh, building more functional strength. They burn more calories. They'll speed up the metabolism better. They're just far more effective. So whatever body you can develop with isolation movements only, number one, you would have got there way faster had you Whoa. incorporated compound. And now number two, you ha you're not reaching your full potential. Yeah, I would say uh, um, you can dig a pool with a shovel or a tractor. It's up to you. Mm. I'm saying if you if you if you really want to use a shovel to do it, you absolutely could. Um, and I guess if that's the the approach you'd rather have, but that's how big of a difference lifting those compound lifts will accelerate your results. Fat yeah. loss, building muscle, strength. So, but that being said, you could. I mean, I know I actually know a lot of a lot of guys that well, I mean, I competed with a lot of people that like did not train um, compound lifts, and they built some of the most competitive physiques. Wait, they did no compound lifts? Very little. Wow. Well, mm. I mean, bench pre everybody bench presses, mm -hmm. right? But I mean, they're not they're not squatting, they're not deadlifting, they're not mm -hmm. overhead pressing. So mm -hmm. those th those three, which I think are three very important movements that you should be doing. Yeah. Um, they, most people bench press, but I mean, the overhead press, the deadlift, and the squat. Um, are were not in a lot of body. They weren't in my routine for a very long time. I was this guy. Yeah, but mm. you still did rows. You still did right. Yeah, yeah. I did some other. Press. But I, when I think of someone saying this, I think of them. They're not doing the the big ones, mm. right? Mm. Yeah. Like they're not doing the big compound lifts that are people because they're hard. They're yeah. hard to get good at, and that's so people uh, 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 avoid them. But that's what you, you got to understand is that what makes them so good and so valuable is the fact that they're hard. Mm -hmm. Is the fact that it it has. A long it has a long period before you get really good and mastered. If you if you do things and the body gets good at it and masters it really quick, the results slow down. You got to understand that. So you know how hard is it to teach somebody how to do a tricep push down or a bicep curl? It's not very hard, and because it's not very hard and it's easy to learn how to do that, the results are quick. You get some a little bit of results as soon as you start doing it, but then it falls off really fast because it's that easy to do it. It's the things that have. A, that are very challenging for you to learn how to do that provide all this all these results because it's a it's a long time for the body to adapt and get good at it. Yeah, this question just makes me cringe. Yeah, I know like, like right away. <laughs> Mainly because uh, just the overall function of your body. I mean, nobody. It, 
if, you, if this is your mentality, if you just want to pump your, and air up your muscles and look, you know, decent uh, in terms of like a balanced symmetrical physique, and that's your only goal in life, uh, you still have to recognize the fact of how your body is going to move and function and be able to operate long term. And there's going to be problems that, that occur from that when you segment your body into just single joint movements all the time. You're not going to have that communication uh, for your overall body like you would doing these compound lifts where we have to organize uh, more muscle groups involved to really pull off uh, normal things in life, like heavy objects, you got to move and do things and rotation and, 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 you know, you're going to leave yourself susceptible uh, to more uh, uh, instances where an injury might occur. I wish I understood this when I was younger because I, I can understand where this person is coming from. I was definitely this. I mean, as a, even as a trainer, even having the knowledge of knowing that, oh, compound lifts are supposed to be better for me, yada, yada. I didn't care because I could build a physique. But now where I'm at in my life, boy, do I wish I would have pieced that together a lot earlier. I think I'd be further along. I would have had to put in half the work that I put in to get to where I'm at physique-wise. And, and I love that. I, I understand this now. Today as a father and being so busy with business and everything else, I, I don't have the same uh, commitment to the gym as I did just five years ago competing when I'm in there seven days a week training hard for an hour, an hour and a half every single day. It just doesn't look like that anymore. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get 30 minutes and sometimes that's only two or three times a week. And if I was doing isolation exercises, I would see like nothing. Like I literally, you, if you're only training a half hour, an hour, you know, and maybe on a good week, two or three hours in a week of training and you're doing bicep curls, tricep pushdowns and lateral raises and, and pec deck, you, you ain't seeing shit as far as results. But I tell you what, and that little bit of time, if all I'm doing is overhead pressing, squatting, deadlifting, rowing, bench pressing, just those those five major movements, if I'm doing just those things in that time, which you could do accomplish that in that few, little bit of time, I'm like maintaining a decent physique. Yeah, this you know what this reminds me of? Uh, it reminds me of those like kit cars that you could buy where you you, you put like that car together. It looks like a Ferrari, <laughs> yeah. but it's got like a you know four cylinder Honda engine in it. <laughs> it's all patched together. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense yeah. uh, to me because uh, yeah, I want to look good, but I also want to be able to move and be strong. And isolation movements just get crushed uh, when it comes to performance. But again, the results you're going to get are just you're going to get there faster, and you're going to get further with the most effective exercises uh, mm -hmm. than you would if you did the exercises that are not as effective. And also, uh, it's really hard to make up for them. In other words, I can't think of six or maybe even eight isolation movements all done together with lots of sets and volume that would be equivalent to five sets of squats. You know, you could take a bunch of isolation exercises and put them together and say, I'm not squatting, but I'm doing all these isolation, I got one for quads, I got one from inner thighs, outer thighs, glutes, and hamstrings, and calves. Put them all together, still not going to equal right. one exercise. That's how effective they are. So, you know, like Adam said, you can you can do things the hard way, or you can do things the easier way. It makes no sense to me why uh, somebody would want to go the long route and do it the, in a way that would result in less strength and, and mobility. Next question is from Mel Bell McB32. Wow, he's names today. Yeah. Creative. What, what causes the small muscles in your upper back and rotator cuff not to strengthen, resulting in shoulder pain? Okay, so shoulder pain can be quite common in people who get really strong with bench presses and overhead rows. Um, and it's not, not necessarily because they got strong at the presses. It's because the supporting stabilizing muscles couldn't keep up with these big prime moving muscles, right? So you have muscles that stabilize your upper arm, your, your humerus bone, and they prevent it from twisting, right? So they keep it st strong and stable. And then you have these big prime movers, your pecs, your, your delts, your triceps, and those you're working directly by bench pressing and overhead pressing. And these stabilizer muscles, they are strengthening a bit, but over time, these prime movers start to get so strong that these stabilizer muscles just can't keep up. You know, it's like a, it's like putting a really, really way powerful, too much torque. It is. It's like having a car. That's, with, a good, that's uh, the way to explain it. it right totally. There. It's like having a car with a normal frame, 
uh, that normally is 150 horsepower, That's and right. then you, you put, put a thousand horsepower engine in it. The Ooh. frame is going to twist. Yeah, you, you exactly. know, if you don't if you don't stabilize the frame and strengthen the stability in the car, it's literally going to twist the frame as soon as you hit the. To gas. me, that's the best yeah. analogy for this question. Is yeah. exactly what Justin just said. It's like it is literally that. Like you can't and you can't do that. By the way, if, if you don't know anything about cars, I know very little about cars. I know enough to know that. Like I can't take my Camaro, and I can't t- turn it into a thousand horsepower engine just by itself. Like mm. I could do that. You need to reinforce it. But though. it would yeah. literally like it would the, it would rip apart. Mm-hmm. It would it would be so much horsepower that I wouldn't be reinforcing all the little things. You know, the suspension on it has to be able to do that. You have to be able to sway bars. You'd have to have all these things, the tires, the the rear end, like all these other things have to be uh, strong enough mm-hmm. to support that much torque. And that's exactly what's going on here is you've built so much big muscle, right? So much horsepower that you're not work focusing on all the other things that support yeah, you have it. to build up the supporting cast and that's you know it's, it's just as essential like so maintaining the actual function of your your shoulder is is crucial and the thing about the shoulder is it's it, its ability to go through so many different ranges of motion is it, it almost seems endless and so uh for people to just focus on what you're saying is mainly that sagittal plane and that overhand grip and everything is is really building and developing mm-hmm. you know this 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 insane amount of strength in that direction uh you know it, it's leaving all the rest really susceptible to uh you know not being able to control uh you know where your bone is in in the joint and everything else and then boom you, you're you're open for something to snap yeah and you know here's something else that happens as a result of it at some point your body refuses right. uh, to get stronger because you get to a kind of a breaking point so i've actually well injury happens you, well not, injury happens a lot of i time. mean or you're just like oh man I, I got my bench press up to this weight and, well you and, you've shared this your story of the your rotator cuff story that's right i remember years ago as a kid remember when i was a kid uh the exercise all guys compared was bench press that was like the the test of strength, right? So if you met another dude that lifted weights, yeah, how much you bench? You didn't ask him how much they squatted or deadlift or what. It was always how much can you bench? So it was like this real important exercise, right? So <laughs> I, it was like one of my focuses was I got to get a really good bench press, right? It's ego lifting. I was one of those guys. And I remember, I, I don't remember what the weight was I got stuck at, but I got stuck at a particular weight and I couldn't go up and I couldn't go up for the longest time. Couldn't figure out why I couldn't improve. And uh, I, I was reading a, uh, I don't remember what magazine it was. It must, must have been Muscle and Fitness or something. And in the back, in the very back, they always had these little ads for supplements or a new exercise machine or whatever. And I always loved reading the little ads because I always thought I'd discover some kind of secret back there. Like, oh, <laughs> this is where I'm going to learn like something new, right? Yeah. And I remember seeing this picture. I think it was called a shoulder horn. And it was this plastic device that went over someone's neck and then they they put their arms over it and they would do what I know now to be external oh, shoulder rotation. rotation. Looks like a big ass thigh master for your shoulders. Kind of, right? <laughs> and so you put it over your shoulders and you do this thing and I thought, oh, this is this is weird. This is so silly. Anyway, I talked it. There it is. It's, it's a shoulder, shoulder horn rotator cuff is the name of it. Look at that guy's mullet. Dude. That's the He's exact picture. It, yeah. Is it really? Look at the guy's He's mullet. Obviously, it's in the early 90s. Yeah, 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 look at that. So I remember talking to, uh, I think it was a friend of mine or a trainer, and they said, oh, yeah, if you strengthen these muscles, you're going to be, your, your bench press will go up. So I didn't buy the shoulder horn. I just mimicked the exercise at the gym. I went to the gym, put my arm up on a bench, grabbed a dumbbell, and I remember feeling so unstable. I had like a five pound dumbbell and I rotated in, and I remember thinking, oh, my shoulder, this does not feel good. I thought, this is interesting. So I did that, and within a week, my bench press went up 10 pounds. Like within a week, because I strengthened these muscles that needed to get stronger, and they were holding me back. Um, And that's when I learned that these are important areas to strengthen. And even if you just want to get stronger in the gym, you got to work on mobility and stability, because those will get in your way. They'll prevent you from progressing. Well, an easy way to do that um, is... Be, this is why I love like the stuff that Justin likes to talk about. Like what's neat about unconventional training is it it challenges a lot of those types of yeah. muscles. Yeah. And that's what makes it so beneficial. And that's why it should be in everybody's routine. So you don't have to go get a shoulder horn and do some direct exercise just for your rotator cuff. You can do a kettlebell swing or you can do a uh, mace bell swing mm-hmm. that incorporates that. So you get this exercise that's going to strengthen it and has other benefits too. That's what's neat 
neat about yeah. incorporating unconventional training is you uh, as a, a you know as a uh, byproduct you do that also. That's why well, I think it's it so really great. should get beyond unconventional. I mean, if you're really serious about maintaining this this crazy amount of strength in your shoulder and you're really trying to get beyond you know your plateau and, and press it a bit further, you should be thinking about loaded rotational moves. If you're not, then you're not building up your supporting cast properly. And I I actually respect people out there like a Chris Duffin who he came up with like the shoulder rock and so it's very similar to a mace bell one of the only guys that's like a, a freak of nature you know lifting like ungodly amounts of weight but is considering that as a component in his training to support uh, this this gargantuan amount of weight yeah if you're if you're a muscular strong person at the gym and you find that when you go throw the baseball around with your kid or frisbee at the beach and you find that your shoulders sore the next day even though you're really strong and fit it's because you need to strengthen and work on this supporting cast of muscles. You can also, if you want to learn some of the stuff that we did, Adam taught a class. Uh, you go to primeprowebinar.com, and there is a specific shoulder mobility movement in there that is way better than uh, like even shoulder horn or isolated, you know, shoulder external rotation exercises. The handcuff with the rotation. Handcuff or do something like that and do it right, and you'll get a lot out of that in terms of shoulder stability. And it is a free class. You just go on there and, and watch it. Next question is from Connor Nagel07. How do mini bulks and cuts compare to traditional three month intervals of bulking and leaning out? Well, you know, it's funny about this. We talked about mini cuts and mini bulks. Uh, first year we started the podcast where we recommended rather than people going on these long, you know, extended periods of time of dieting or bulking, um, just through our, our, our own experience, we saw better results when they were shorter periods and they were interrupted by kind of doing the opposite or by increasing calories enough to maintain. And in my experience, the shorter cuts result in more fat loss, less muscle loss, and the shorter bulks result in more muscle gain and less fat gain. Well, we now have studies that prove it. Okay, They have studies now that actually compare you know, periods of time of dieting. One group has interruptions where they'll eat maintenance calories for a few days or a week in between versus the other group. And sure enough, they burn more body fat and preserve more muscle when they do it. So that's the big difference. So, you know, and I want to add something to that. I would still recommend this, even if the studies came out and didn't prove that. For the psychological reasons? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the thing that, that we always got to look at too. And so I, and I really think that that's the reason why I think we all came to that same conclusion over the years of training people is we, for sure, we felt confident even without having a study to prove that this is the superior way to do it. And I think it's because one, yes, the studies prove that it does, it does make a difference and it's better, but then also the psychological piece, which studies don't ever really talk about, mm -hmm. or very rarely do right. you talk about that in, you know, building muscle and fat burning studies. They don't bring up like, oh, psychologically, this is more, people are going to be more consistent with this. But I think about that as a coach and as a trainer, because I have to get these people to follow these diets. Having somebody follow a diet for a couple weeks and then switching it up and going the other direction is so much easier than telling somebody for the next three months we are going to eat in this surplus <laughs> or eat in this deficit every single day for this long of a period of time. That's super hard to get oh. them to be consistent with that where if I say, listen to a client, I, what I need from you is just that the next two weeks we're going to eat mm -hmm. just like this and then I'm going to change something up. It's so much, it would be so much easier for my clients to stay focused for those two weeks because they knew that I was going to interrupt it soon. And, and even if they would go through a day where it's like, oh, hunger pains, this is really hard. They're like, I can do this. It's only seven more yeah. days or it's only three more days. And then Adam's going to give me more calories. Yeah. Well, you guys always talk about the increase of mass that you actually gain when you're above a certain amount that you're, you know, trying to bulk anyway. And so it really doesn't look that advantageous to go, you know, exceed that, you know, sort of 500 uh, calorie amount anyway, because it, for the most part, it looks like you're gaining a lot of fat with uh, muscle, even yeah. if you're on pace so uh you know just to, to keep it within those parameters and stretch it out a bit further seems like you're going to get closer to your goal and not just build mass you don't want yeah and it results in, in less likelihood of uh, like especially if it's a cut it's less you're less likely to binge or go in the opposite direction in a big way when right. you go on a, on a three month strict calorie deficit you know the odds that at the end of that you're going to go off the rails is much higher than if it's a three week uh cut now here's how it looks okay here's how it would look if your overall goal is fat loss, um, and let's say you want to lose 20 pounds and it takes you, I don't know, five months, let's just say, 
What it what the shortcuts mean is that you'll do a deficit for a few weeks and then you'll interrupt it with like a week of maintenance or a slight surplus and then you go back to the cut. So a majority of the time you are at a deficit because you do want to lose a lot of body fat, but you interrupt it uh, at uh, scheduled intervals. So it becomes mini cuts. That's what we mean by that. And then, then the reverse, if you want to bulk, same thing. You bulk for three weeks and then you have like a few days to a week where the calories are down a little bit to stimulate your appetite, reduce fat gain. That's what we mean by it. Doesn't mean you go three weeks, uh, three weeks in every direction all the time. Um, if your goal is ultimately a lot of fat loss, you got to stay more in the cut. If your goal is ultimately muscle gain, you stay more in the bulk. But inter, you know, interrupting it uh, at short intervals. You know, three weeks is the number that I typically work with. Anywhere between three to two to four weeks, I would say um, that seems to work best uh, in experience. And then again, the studies support it. Next question is from Jazz Fitness. What do you think about Gymshark now sponsoring gamers? Oh, oh. the shreds of athleisure wear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? From a business standpoint, that's a good point. What a brilliant market. Well, I'll I mean, tell you what. I'll tell you what. Because the gamer market is oh, it's huge, massive, yeah. and already we're seeing supplement companies start to target these these kids and gamers or whoever. Yeah. And which makes sense. Obviously, you're gonna. You drink a pre-workout to work out. I can yeah. totally tran- transition that into pre. Every you know. high caffeinated, you know, sugary drink uh, on the planet is trying to get in the space. Yeah. Now it makes sense. This is so. If you're a gamer, here's the thing. It's funny we're even talking about that. And I know I have a son who who's definitely a gamer. You now feel like you belong to this group. So gamers tend to talk the same lingo, just like bodybuilders or powerlifters or dancers, you start to speak the same lingo. You start to you know talk about the same brands and games. It's not that hard to get them all to start to it's dress the same. It's very much a cult. Yeah, yeah, they start to dress the same or have the same backpacks. Or I remember when we had the kettlebell competition here, how everybody had the same mm. brand uh, bags. You guys remember that? I remember yeah. thinking like, everybody's got, I never heard of this brand. So yeah. this is more like a tap out. Uh, of this sport, though. dude, yeah. so smart. If I owned a, co- a clothing company, I would be like, no, this they, is a great they're. Market. I mean, here's the thing: like, uh, we I tease that they're, uh, you know, the shreds of athleisure. Wear, although I really mean that, I really think that the <laughs> yeah. the quality of what they're putting out is okay. You know, at best, by the way. Um, but they're smart. They're really re- whoever is running the marketing uh, is is pretty damn brilliant, or whoever they've hired to do that is really really smart. Mm-hmm. They go after. Uh, niche markets, and the, of course, it makes sense. You got okay if you're a gamer, you got to wear clothes. You're at home all day long, so comfy like athleisure type I of guess. wear. You yeah. don't want, you know, you're not going to see uh, J. Crew go after them. That would be stupid. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like wear a suit. Yeah, exactly. You're not going to wear that, but you know, comfy athleisure wear type of apparel is very comfortable. I mean, we that's what we wear all day long. Mm-hmm. Like we wear athleisure wear. We all wear day. quality though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yours yeah. a big difference. Yeah. There. Well, yeah. but I mean, I think it's it's brilliant by Gymshark, but I also think that. That when a company like this is so popular, like Shreds was in supplements when we first started the podcast, uh, you know, people just assume because it's big and it's successful that it's good. You know, we live in a time now where, you know, a lot of these companies that are are massive right now were really were just they're great business. They're great, they're smart. They got into a space early and they took advantage of it. You know, and what I mean by Jim Shark being the shreds of athleisure wear. Shreds dominates uh, supplements on Instagram, not in the world, on Instagram, right? They, if you That's walk, how they grew. If you walked into a GNC five years ago and asked them what Shreds is, the kid would probably go, who the hell is that? Or if you asked EAS, uh, Bill Phillips, do you know who Shreds is? He would chuckle and have no idea who that is. But if you asked somebody who's into fitness that was on Instagram five years ago, do you know who Shreds is? They would say absolutely because they dominated Instagram uh, for supplements. And the way they did that was when everybody was first kind of getting popular on Instagram and it still wasn't a thing yet where a lot of companies were advertising and had what quote unquote influencers, Mm -hmm. they got them all. They create and they created all these pages that were around fitness, right? All these great bodies and workout routines. And then they went out and they sponsored all these young kids that were popular and fit and ripped. And they got them to push their supplements and they gave them a kickback. And since the margins are so good in it, they could afford to give them a little bit of money, some decent money. So these kids were making good money by pushing these supplements. Gymshark did the same thing with athleisure wear. Mm-hmm. They were the first ones to get into Instagram, look at all the fitness people and go, oh, wait, there's not like a, you know, Nike and Reebok. They're not in here. Nike and Reebok aren't talking to influencers on it. They are now. It's small potato. It was small potatoes for yeah. them at the time. Yeah. And so a, a small company or they were a small company, Gymshark saw this opportunity to get all of these uh, fitness influencers, get them wearing some gear, 
and promoting their stuff. I want to see Felix Gray in this space. I feel like gamers. Yeah. Oh, it yeah, makes perfect yeah. sense. You know, like just on the screens all day, like just, just to to actually contribute something, uh, you know, healthy in their direction to be able to, uh, you know, provide some bit of substance. There. You know what I would imagine? Actually, I I would think that there's a, a blue blocker that has already made their way into game. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, I know. People Felix, thought of it. Felix Gray is a, a, our focus on Apple, Google. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah. They're working with like True. yeah the big dogs. Uh, and, and have been doing that for a while now. Um, I don't know if they if they ever plan to go in the gaming direction. Their brand feels a little more. I don't know. I don't know if luxury. Well, it's it's dude. Yeah. It's such a smart move. You know, when I hear my son talk to his friends, like there there are gamer athlete celebrities. Just like when you hear oh, people yeah. talk about ba you know basketball or, or football or baseball, they know that this one player and this. Oh, did you see so and so? They played whatever. They're become it's becoming that way. I mean, look, I'll tell you what, in five years, gamers are gonna have major sponsors. Yeah. Not yet, but I they just, will. Oh, uh, I, bro, just no, pick, I just no, picture no, 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 like no. Uh, people like like acne, you know, companies. No, 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 no. <laughs> Nike. Bro, it's you guys, it, it's already there. Doug, pull up a uh, highest paid gamer versus a uh, highest paid athlete. Yeah, they're there. Yeah. Oh yeah. But they're not like they're not yeah. like Nike isn't sponsoring oh, them yeah. yet or, bro, or, or are they? Huge brands oh. now are paying these kids massive well, amounts. Gym Shark needs like advertisements with like Cheeto dust all over their clothes, and you know what I mean, like <laughs> yeah. that kind of thing to make it work. <laughs> but I mean, it's a, again, it's a smart move. Um, I don't know how. I guess it's just about it, uh, like association. Right? It's oh, well, it also right. Okay, we we talk uh, bad about um, what's the like, why can't I not think of right? Beachbody? Okay, yeah, Beachbody does billions of dollars online um, uh, marketing with uh, programs, and the thing that we talk bad about it is the programs. The programs are terrible. Mm -hmm. They really are. But that doesn't mean I think Beachbody is a terrible company. It's a brilliant. Very smart marketing. Brilliant company. Yeah. They they are they're marketing geniuses and we watch what they're doing all the time to see are, are there things that we can emulate but while also maintaining integrity and being authentic to who we are. So that I mean they're brilliant at that. So sometimes these examples of these companies people assume just cuz they're massive and they're they're good. That doesn't mean they're well, necessarily good. They're good at marketing. Well, my my son was breaking down for me the way that these guys these pro gamers train. You know that they'll play some uh, sometimes they'll play max six hours in a day, and I thought I, said, I asked him. I said, "Why don't they play more than that?" He goes, "Because they found that if they play too much, it reduces their performance. Burnout. They also exercise mm -hmm. regularly. They have Diet. specific. Some a lot of them have trainers that work on shoulder stability to help prevent them from getting forward shoulder. They they work on." Hand eye coordination exercise, they eat special diets. Like, bro, it's look a at, big deal. Look at those yeah. are all those. Look at Honda, Monster SAP, Energy. Monster, yeah, Twitch, uh, Jersey at, Sub, Hyper. I mean, these are all well, these there's are a lot about, of money in that. But, uh, but space, look, yeah. look, a lot of these these companies we not we might not have heard of. It, so at some point, it's going to be all these huge, you know, brands. I bro, would it imagine get much bigger than Honda yeah, dude, and SAP and Monster. Are you kidding me? Those yeah. are massive yeah, companies. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. I know in uh, in South Korea, it's uh, they have stadiums full packed, yeah, full of people South watching Korea, here. Yeah. They, they just started filling there. Remember when we talked to well, Mark Mastroff? Anymore, He's talking yeah. about how the gamers are filling the filling the the Sacramento Kings stadium up more than some of the basketball. You guys games. are going to be yeah. both. You guys are going to be grandpas, and you're going to be telling your grandkids. Dude. When I was when I was younger, we played sports in person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. and we, we got had, hurt. We actually hit each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we got hurt. You know, crazy. They're like my wrist hurts. Ew, you're weird. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find. All of us on Instagram, including Doug, the producer. You can find Doug at Mind Pump Doug. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Someone's doing a, a continuous movement like a shoulder press. It's really hard to get them to focus on other parts of their body while they're also pressing at the same time. They're focused so much on just getting the weight over their head that they're thinking about their arms, their shoulders, their upper, their upper body, where there is a big part of like standing overhead pressing.